to the stage, our X-Men. First and foremost, let's hear it for Ray Chase. <laughs> Mr. Matthew Watterson. <laughs> and AJ Lacasio. <laughs> yes. Got That's how I'm doing. We didn't have to have to share with you. You. Listen, I think that is so appropriate. I'm not saying that we planned this, but we, we got to make up some things for you guys. We can't have people come in between you like, wow. 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 He is flexible. And we can learn about it. Remember it. Yes. Remember it. Um, guys, thank you all so very much for joining us. Um, thank you for being a part of such a phenomenal series in X-Men 97. Uh, before we start, I want to give you guys your flowers. Uh, it was nominated for Henny, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Make some noise for me. Oh, yeah, no, that's big talk. That's big talk. Because this, this was true story time. This was not just an animated project, not just a superhero project. You touched hearts. Whether you intended to or not, you broke us in many ways. Definitely you. Um, <laughs> but I think there's something that needs to be stated because the three of you are relatively newcomers to this series. Um, you're not the original actors for uh, from the original series. Um, so taking over for Norm is a, is a big deal. What was it like to step into the shoes of Norm Spencer for Cyclops? Yeah, I, uh, I, play, I play Cyclops in, uh, in X-Men, uh, and I uh, auditioned for the role. It was a strict voice match. They were like, we want to do exactly what it sounded like in the 90s. Uh, auditioned, got the part, recorded the first episode, and then re-recorded it four more times wow. as we like sort of found out like how exactly, do, how closely do we want this to match? And I think we were just kind of changing the style a bit a little to make it uh, less, that, less the superhero 90s style acting and bring it more into the more grounded acting of today, and uh, but with a little bit of that of that '90s flavor too. We, we kind of like fe uh, found a part. It took a, a long time to do, uh, but I think it came out great. I think what the show does really well is marrying the two sides Absolutely. of today and yesterday. Yeah. Absolutely. No, very well said. Very well said. Makes noise for that, y'all. Hey, I'll also ask uh, the crowd just by applause. Are you okay if we do season one spoilers? Applause if yes. <laughs> Anyone you at all? Even if a single one, okay, yeah, all right, we'll do season one spoilers. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, no, like that's that's one. Okay. yeah right. No season two spoilers, Disney has shooters, okay? <laughs> Just letting you know. Just letting you know. <laughs> AJ, what about you? I mean, to take a look for Chris, like, that's that's a big role. Even though he was still a part of this season as Cable, but Gambit, I mean, like... Yeah, no, it was terrifying. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I was, I was uh, still, when people come up and they're like, you did a great job, I'm like, thank you. Because I... <laughs> Yeah, he's so iconic and sounds, he's not specifically Cajun, he's not specifically, he's Southern, he's kind of his own Canadian Cajun, because, you know, Chris is Canadian, so it's, it's its own thing. So when I went in, yeah, I was like, do you guys just want to do a straight up voice match? Do you want to do something where we bring a little more Cajun in? And we kind of went somewhere in the middle, right. but still adhere as much as possible to the original sound. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, no, I've been, up until people heard it, was just full of anxiety. Uh, yeah, because I was like, people are going to crucify me if this <laughs> sounds wrong. I was like, hey everybody, I'm Gambit. <laughs> uh, we would have loved it, we would have loved it. Absolutely, absolutely. No. So, so Matthew, to come in with, with Magneto and the level of showmanship that you have to bring to this character who is so robust and so very well thought out over years and years of storytelling, what was it like to put that helmet on? Similar to AJ, uh -huh. like, I was mortified for probably the first three or four episodes. Come on. Well, <laughs> David had created such a specific and beloved character. Sure. And also, we record so much. And so, we record when we first start recording, there's no visuals or anything. Right. So, we don't have any, any other reference. We're relying entirely on our voice director, Meredith, and the series director, Jake and either the other directors and, you know, Bo, the, the writer of it, mm -hmm. to guide us as to where we're going to be. And Magneto is, Ma Magneto and Storm are theatrical. Come on now. They are big That's and right. they are grandiose. And there was very much for the first few episodes, and, and sort of like Ray, like we redid episode two, or, or didn't redo, we kept going back and adjusting mm -hmm. episode two half a dozen times. And so, 
I never really knew because I there was no reference. I couldn't see what anybody else was doing. I didn't hear what anybody else was doing. Gotcha. There's times when I, there was times, especially at the beginning, when I'm I'm doing it, going, "Am I doing something that is going to be over the top and foolish and is not going to fit into the world?" What do you guys? Yes. Think? What do you guys think? <laughs> yeah. Yes. No. No. I think. You know, I think. No. You know, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but but and and then there came a point after we got through like three or four episodes where I I just had to decide, okay. This, we're not changing it now, right. and I have to put my trust in the production crew that they're getting what they want. Mm -hmm. uh, Bo did tell me after the entire thing was done when we were watching, after we watched, uh, actually, actually after we watched episode five, he did say to me, you know, Magneto's my favorite character, so if you had been doing it wrong, I would have just fired him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really glad you didn't so tell me that no. until afterwards. He goes, no, 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 I would have just canned him. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I appreciate that, but no, it, it 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 is it was a scary thing to take over, and you know David had done a version of Magneto that was so well known and yeah. so beloved, and taking on a character that is that theatrical and trying to make it work in the world that it's in was stressful. Well done, man. Absolutely well done. Make some noise for him. Now, considering that this is a continuation of a beloved cartoon series, uh, were you fans of the original uh, 92 show? Am I the only one that could say yes? Yeah, man. Really? It's so awkward. I get it. No, no, no. Yeah, no. Yes. I never I'm a true fan. <laughs> These two fakes. Uh, no. <laughs> no. I was a lot of Victorian boarding school. Yeah, except for this. You were being whipped by, whipped by nuns. Uh, <laughs> not nuns, older boys. Older boys. <laughs> right. That's training for my needle if I've heard it right now. Yeah. I, I mean, so I, it's, it's not cool. or not like, yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. But I, I, my little brother and I, Jamie, would like record all the episodes of VHS, nice, and nice. I would take notes literally because I couldn't keep track of the storylines. Right. I'd be like, okay, this person's related to this person, right. Sabre Tooth's with the father of who, and Trask is what. And the, so there was, yeah, I kept copious notes, and I wanted to be Gambit. I would throw cards, you know, yeah, which would just go, you know, they would, <laughs> you've never tried to throw cards. It's not easy. It doesn't. I've seen those people go like slice a pickle, right? You know what I mean? Like, I would, can't do that. Um, That's but, yeah. a mutation, guys. That's a mutation. Yeah, exactly. But now I collected all the, I still had my, because I was a nerd, in the box on card, Childhood Gambit and Wolverine. In wow. Because yeah. I like the art so much that I was like, I don't want, I don't want to take it out. So I had other Gambit figures, but yeah, I was a huge fan. The Pizza Hut stuff with the the cuffs and the. I don't remember about that right there. You just look back at the yeah, Pizza Hut. Oh there. man, yeah, I God, and Pizza. And there's Pizza Hut had like a stamp, and, like there was like a Rocketeer and like Fern Gully and X. Rocketeer, like, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, like Pizza Hut had uh, yeah a monopoly on just cool stuff. Listen, let's bring back that level of Pizza Hut. I know, <laughs> except the Fern Gully one. So the Fern Gully one came with seeds. Does anyone remember? This? I, now I'm dating <laughs> myself. Seeds? It came with a bag of seeds. Because like, <laughs> they were they wrote your own pizza. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, it's like it's the magic of Fern Gully. Did, did they take a bag of seeds? Did they tell you what the seeds were for? Or was this just like put them in the garden? Yeah, 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 I don't know. Know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just grow weed to make you hungry to eat more pizza. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Oh, genius. Genius. Children arrested all over America <laughs> in the 90s. Um, but anyway, yeah, I was a huge fan. I mean, I, I still am, like, and, and so much of my like collection is all. I have a whole Gambit case that way predates the show. That's awesome. So, that's yeah. You also, I imagine uh, that you at home have ten copies of that shirt, and that's what you throw over yeah. your <laughs> when you throw over your wardrobe. That's all you have. Exactly. Honestly, it's gotten to that point. I went to Hot Topic, and now they have this. Oh, oh snap! Yeah, and I was like, oh, and I like freaked out and grabbed as if I need another one. But yeah, it's like there's an episode of Doug where he opens up his closet. Yes. Yeah. And it's just all the same thing. That's basically Basically become my wardrobe. That's <laughs> how you do it. Go to a con, cut off the sleeves, and yeah. So are we, are we going to do the midriff though? Like you got it. Listen, man, I got it. I got to eat. <laughs> you can And those guys like Chris Pratt and stuff we see in the movies, like they've been fasting for weeks. Sure, but I'm just saying the big A's. You just gotta, you gotta earn it. I just really like so. Yeah, you just see me like. <laughs> All right, let's do this. No, I love it. I love it. Now, even though you guys weren't necessarily fans of the original show. What is your entrance into X Men as a comic book series or characters? Was it live action movies that you guys knew them from in any other way? 
how did you know about the X Men at all? Is this show honestly? Really? Like uh, I certainly let the movies wash over me. Sure, I wouldn't sure. say I watched them. I was like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, but it was this show, and uh, when I, I um, got the part, I got Erica and uh, Erica and Julia the book. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, it was fantastic. And I opened the pages and just started reading the story about what made this show so iconic. It's like watching Citizen Kane today, where you're like, I don't know, what's the big deal? But it's like that was the first movie where they filmed a ceiling. They've never done that before. That stuff is groundbreaking. Uh, and you look back and you don't realize why it's so groundbreaking. So reading that book uh, gave me such an appreciation for the level. It was one of those things where it didn't have to go so hard. It was because they said, we have this opportunity to tell these stories. Let's use the medium of Saban Entertainment to actually deliver something punching way above our weight class. Uh, and, uh, and I think they did that again with this thing. I think everyone was, was expecting, it's another reboot series. And they just said, let's take it to the next level. Million percent, million percent. Matthew, what about you? No, and mine was the films because I was in boarding school in England, right. so I didn't have access to the show when it was on. There were always kids that had some of the X Men comics, but there was never, it was never a continuous storyline. It was never the same era, so you know you'd see one here and there. Okay. And then the next time you saw it, it was a different era. All the relationships had changed. People were on different sides, and it was it was cool, but I couldn't sort of follow it. So it was the the live action films. But even having said that. From some of the comics and things, there, I know thinking back, there was nothing in the films which was new information. Mm -hmm. So somehow, just through popular culture, I assimilated so, yeah. a lot of X Men lore. Of course. And so then it was, you know, it was the it, it, the initial films, and then from there, sort of then starting to pick more up. And then, you know, when this show came along, fortunately at that point, Disney already had X Men back. Right. So Bo gave me a list of, like these are the episodes that you need to start with, and so I just. When your homework is watching the X Men animated series, right. it's a pretty good homework. Yeah, that's so, not bad. That's not bad. Like, um, so that was what it was. Just go back, watch that, and, and go from there. I love it. No, that's fantastic. Just out of curiosity, with this first season, was there any particular episodes that stand out as your favorite? Not just in the sense of what you performed, but watching it and seeing what they ultimately did storytelling wise. Do you have a favorite episode that stood out? One of the things that was cool was that I wasn't in every episode, right. so I didn't have scripts for anything that I wasn't in, mm -hmm. which meant that I loved all the ones that I wasn't in because those I got to yeah. just watch. Okay. I totally felt the same way. Yeah, yeah, completely. Yeah, all of them were surprises, and all of them were such a great dessert that you get to see. They're like, oh, what did they come up with this time? Yeah. So that was a really that was really cool. Yeah. So well, everything yeah. after episode six for me then. <laughs> 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 it doesn't have to be that same criteria for you. What's how does five fit for you? Oh, it's awesome. I mean, the crazy. I mean, so it's bittersweet, obviously, of course, because of, of what happens. Spoilers. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Before you say that, uh, this young lady playing Storm, she actually has not seen it yet. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> the front row. And you're, but this, no, 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 no. This is it. How do we? How do we get around this? No, no, no. Don't. No, she said she. she Someone's already told her what happens. Was it the person to your left well, who's dressed like? Yeah, who told you what happened? <laughs> who told you what happened to me? It was you. Wow! Oh, right there. Oh, I cried. Okay, I, all right, that's good. That's all right, good. I cried too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, well, you know what happens, but uh, yeah. I, I love the episode. It's weird because. When we recorded it, you know, you don't see. Has that baby watched it? Yeah, yeah. baby watched it. Yeah, that was exactly bring it up. That's you remembering of me <laughs> when they called me up and said, "Hey, congratulations, you're on X Men." But um, after episode five, and I was like, "What?" I yeah, I was very disheartened. But then when I read it and realized just how good it was, yes. and it's just a piece for Gambit because I'm such a massive Gambit fan to see him get to be written in a way that was impactful and meaningful. And he wasn't Absolutely. just a joke wearing like a fuchsia chest piece. He actually like did something and the animation's so beautiful. Like that whole thing, I was like cheering and screaming. And I, I love it. You know, I mean, there is sort of a twist of sadness to it, but that, what a cool moment. And oh, then, man. I mean, just as far as like favorite, it's hard to choose a favorite because it all meshes into one thing to me yeah. too, because it's like, it's all so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I'll just say episode five, it's easier. Okay, that's fair. That's one of Matthew, did you have a favorite? Funnily enough, I I like the pilot. I like the first. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, that was a it, it is. That's a, that is a thing that I can't think of another show that, that I can't think of another show has done in terms of 
not in the reboot, mm -hmm. not being, you know, a, a different iteration of just, this show ended 25 years ago, we're going to pick up as though this is just the next season yeah. that came out six months later, not 25 years later, and make it work, and make it so that if you just start there, it makes sense, and make it if you had seen the previous five seasons, it makes sense, mm -hmm. and sort of reintroduce you to the characters in certain cases, like, tweak them a little bit and, and you know, give you a, a new view on them while not making it suddenly feel like you're being jerked in a different direction. Like, the skill that was required by production to make that story, to make that work, absolutely, is really easy to overlook. But it's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. That's yes. Like that. That's cool. awesome. I, that's one thing that I can't, sorry, Ray, I'm not letting you talk. I don't need to talk anymore. I'm tired. I'm tired. <laughs> but like all this, and I know we all feel this, and it's like anytime someone's on a show, you get tired of hearing them say, like, it's such a great show, and we're like a family, like, that's all, you know, you get tired of hearing that, but with this show, I was watching it going, they did it. <laughs> I can't believe they did it. <laughs> it's, it's insane to yeah. me that they, because I feel like storytelling as a medium is something that has kind of waned in a lot of ways, yes. and like, really good 2D animation, mm -hmm. and blocking, and directing, and storyboarding, like, it's all there. Plots that end. It, yeah, yeah yes. it's 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 insane, and it's in a way that I'm like, wow, I feel very lucky to be part of this. And just as a fan, if I was watching, I'm like, wow, they did it. They the crazy bastards did it. Like, <laughs> it's it's awesome. It's yeah. so cool. And yeah, sorry to make a scene roll. No, no, I just, no. it's so good. It is. It truly is. Yeah. Ray, did you have a favorite episode? Favorite episode, episode three, is Goblin Queen's hot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they spent a lot of time lovingly animating. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, yeah. 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 Is that the one where the baby gets dipped in the goo? Yep. Who's Simpson Short the Baby oh. gets dipped. Yeah. 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 Because we saw that in the theater at the El Capitan, and there was an audible gasp, yes. which I, I, you know, it's weird to watch a, a cartoon or a show an animated out of the theater. And everyone went, <gasps> when they dropped the baby in the goo, and I was like, <laughs> Laughing, I thought that was so funny. Uh, it was crazy that night. Uh, we had not seen any of the show. The cast had no idea oh, if it was wow. good or not. We were like, the scripts are good, I guess, but we had yeah. no idea. Uh, and uh, they, they brought us to, they rented the El Capitan Theater, iconic place in Los Angeles on Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, and uh, uh, they had Hot Pockets and uh, cereal. Uh, Magnetos. Uh, Magnetos. Yeah, Magnetos. Yeah, that's wow. right. Uh, and uh, we all, all went in with a bunch of fans and we all watched it together that's for awesome. the first time and were blown away. So one, two, and three. That was amazing. What a night. Was was and that was one of, the, one of the cool things was that it was, you know, the theater could take, I don't know, 800 people probably. Mm -hmm. And it was 300 people who were, you know, involved with the production maybe, or 40 people, and the rest of it were rabid fans. Which could go horribly <laughs> wrong. Yes, <laughs> true. Sure. Sure. They, they shut the doors. <laughs> yeah. You did really wrong badly. <laughs> and and as Ray said, none of us had seen anything of it. And so it, it was it was a really cool experience to see with people who are rabid fans and that means that you know if, if it goes well it's gonna go great. If it goes badly, it's gonna go badly. But they the response was fantastic. And also, as Ray was saying, except for a couple of you know, ADR things, none of us had seen much. So right. that was the first chance that we got to see what everybody else had done. And each other. That's yeah. what I mean. I, I, yeah. I met you that night, right? Oh, you, you, AJ I had seen. We yeah. did an IGN yeah. thing. That was it. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That, that day. That happened before? That was before. Because oh. we were all like, what can we say? Who what are can we say? We don't even know if the show's good. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, that's right. crazy. Yeah. It's yeah. Funny. So I sat in front of D, who's Sunspot, and he's right. like, if a puppy were to become a human just instantly, <laughs> that's what he is. <laughs> so I didn't know really who he was, and he was sitting behind me. Every time Gambit would show up or do anything, he would shake my chair. <laughs> <laughs> I just started shaking. He's like, no, get off me. Oh. He just kept shaking me. I was like, who the fuck is this? Uh, sorry, sorry. I don't know what I said. But, uh, it was really sweet and funny, and I didn't realize now that we've gotten to know each other that we hung out. He's like that all the time. Uh, but yeah, it was like it was like a 40x theater experience. You didn't have to pay anything extra. No, exactly. I love it. Um, guys, I want to invite you to ask some questions. So we got the microphone right here. While they're doing so, I want to ask you in that first viewing, um, episode one had so many like hallmark moments, things that like for those of us that only had to watch it one at a time, um, we knew that we were watching something special. At what point was it for each of you? in that first episode that you were like, oh my God, this is it. 
I mean, the theme song. It took yeah, my like, yeah. That's what are we talking about? That, that was, was like, amazing. it was because we'd never seen that either. Yeah. And we knew that they were going to use the same uh, music, but we had no idea, like, were they updated or anything like that. I mean, it's, it's, we knew we were back. Yeah. So, I mean, I, finally, for me, it was, uh, it was actually the Cyclops season. Come on. Yeah, it so, was. Like, yeah. So, <laughs> like, Cyclops is such a, a difficult character to, character to get right, mm -hmm. like Superman, like Captain America, because it's he's such an uh, an earnest guy that it's tough to get him right and make him interesting and what Ray did and what you know the story the the, the writers did and the directors did they made him so awesome so fast and he's yeah. he is himself it's not like they went oh let's make him dark and edgy and give him a trench coat and make him swear like, yeah. <laughs> they kept him who he is yeah. and Ray's doing who he is but he's awesome and so when I started seeing the Cyclops like the Cyclops combat scenes and then the Cyclops you know, dialogue scenes, I'm like, oh, they, 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 all right, if they've got Cyclops down that well, I, I, everything's good. Yeah, yeah, they were like, his beams don't, they're not fire beams, no. they're, uh, they're uh, <laughs> cussing. Yeah. Yeah. So the fact that they knew they used his powers correctly in that first scene immediately, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But that that's like, him in the warehouse, like, yes. yeah. pushing yeah. back and doing all, the, there's a lot of, like, Marvel versus Capcom mm -hmm. stuff. That yes. <laughs> there's, when you meet the crew, or you meet, as, they're as, like, Oh my god, I love this. The, the Sega game, Marvel vs. Capcom. So they're all just trying to fit that stuff in, and their vision for what it is is so clear and precise and correct that it's like, it, honestly, yeah, Cyclops, I feel like, is the fulcrum. He's, the, he's the nucleus of this, and if you get him wrong, it's like, eh. But every time, it, that has nothing to do with your performance. But, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, all jokes aside, like, your performance and the actual characterization in him is where everything rests. And when it opens up and he's so spot on, you're like, yep, we're in. We're back. And Beast, too. Beast yes, is yeah. hard to nail. And every yeah. time he opened his mouth, it's like, that's the funniest, most Beast thing I've ever heard. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Well, we can talk about it. Like, I love you. No, I love you. Like, Come on. <laughs> we love you, and we got some fans that Yes, will... hello. Close on. Hello. Um, who do you think has the best hair of all the characters? Gambit! Next question! Wow! Oh, wow! Magneto! Magneto has pretty beautiful hair. Yeah. Xavier, because he doesn't have to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> He's warm out of bed and looks ready to go. <laughs> you know how much time it takes Magneto to get ready in the morning? He uses a can of Aquanet and a hair dryer. But it works, though. Yeah, yeah, who's good. your favorite? Who's got the best hair you think? Beast. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot of hair. Rogue. Rogue? Uh, All right. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Hard to argue. Hard to argue. Can't argue yeah. with that. Good job. Good job. Thank you for that. Thank uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> now you have to talk at that height. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Hello. Hi there. Hi. Hello. So first I want to say thank you. As a kid that woke up on Saturday morning and started yeah. with Baby yeah. Hugh at 6 a.m. Let's and go. Like, all the way to, yeah. to X-Men and the series. This was amazing. Like, it's really hard to think that, again, 25 years and you picked up, like, six months later. It was so great. But I do have a question. So I know you've probably gotten a lot of questions around Bode Mayo and Nell's controversy and others, so I won't. Like dive into that, but if you want to spill the tea, go for it. Wow! No, but I will. <laughs> we <laughs> literally no. We yeah. have a we have a text thread when that dropped. We were all going what? What? Yeah, we, we have no idea. No, truly, nothing is not an NBA. So yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, and truly, yeah. No and, and and it like at the, at the time we were all going, they're gonna have to tell us something because people are gonna ask. And now yeah. I'm like. Yeah, well, they didn't tell us anything, so... And oh, no, oh. Which believes. I don't believe... I'm sure that everyone's like, they know, they just won't say, but... They, we know yeah, nothing. No idea. Idea. Yeah, we're, we're the last up line of defense. In yeah. All yeah. Things where, yeah. But, so, sorry, go ahead. It's okay, we all know the same thing now. So, <laughs> yeah, would true. you be willing to share a story about them? Oh, story about I was going to say, did you get to meet him very often? Yes. Okay. I, I have a... Well, so, one of my favorite things that Bo would do is give us homework. Uh, Bo would always be like, all right, you get a text or an email, I'll be like, you have to read these comics, watch this, and I would always be like, Bo, I've seen all this. Uh, but Bo would be like, no, you have to, like, we get homework from Bo. Uh, but one of the other things is Bo gave me one of my favorite directions in the very first episode, it might have been the pilot, and uh, basically he was like, every line you deliver is Gambit, he wants to make love to everything he's looking at. <laughs> That's the nice way of saying it. Yeah, but uh, yeah. he was like, he's romancing everything he talks to every every moment. And I was like, 
got it. <laughs> and that, I don't know if he gave that direction to other potential gambits, but that was like, I can do that, I understand that, you know, and that was like a really powerful, one of my friends was asking recently, like, what's one of the best directions you've gotten? And that was one of them where I was just like, yep, got it. Like, there's no way to confuse that. So, yeah. And you did it very well. <laughs> oh, very well indeed. <laughs> What's uncomfortable to me now does that in his general life to all of us. This is true. Listen, if it worked once. Oh, man. <laughs> I need an adult. <laughs> there are no adults. <laughs> it's just us. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. What, what's, what's a good boat story for you guys? Uh, well, it's weird. I was, I'm trying to think. And uh, we, were, uh, we did, uh, this was all a COVID show. So it was yeah. all, everything was completely on Zoom. So I only met him, the one time that I met him was the uh, when we did the watch party at that guy's house. Right. Um, and uh, I don't have any stories. I'm trying to think of something. Well, I mean, but one was the thing I said earlier, which was, was at the watch party where he's talking about when, when afterwards he, he straight out said to me, you know, if you'd have been bad, I would have just canned it. Like, <laughs> which, yeah. which, I, which I appreciate. <laughs> uh, but one of, the, one of the things I will say is that, that he did both for the first season and you know when we were going into the second season was he made sure to at least with me to have a chance to actually talk with me and say hey here's what the arc of the character is here's what's going to happen story wise here's what to expect just so that you kind of had an idea because it's not like we get the entire season's script at the beginning we get to read everything you're you're getting them as they come so you don't necessarily know what's happening at the end what's happening here so it makes it a lot easier to kind of gauge and build what you're doing as you go through to have had the person who is crafting the story or who is responsible for crafting the story give you an overarching idea of where it's going. For sure. For sure. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Uh, it was great meeting you all. I already met all of you by your autographs. Hi. So my question to you guys is, if you could play any other character from X-Men, either the show itself or the comics, who would it be? Mm. You can't pick the character you already are. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. I, I, I go with Sebastian Shaw. Wow. Okay. That's who has been, he was in Genosha. Yeah. yeah. Um, but like people, I've been asked before, like if, if you're gonna do, if you're gonna get to do the live action one, which would you do? And I just, I've always liked Sebastian Shaw. I just think the character's awesome. Okay, all right, we're set. What about a really crappy Wolverine? <laughs> like, ah, first I people are like, everything's great except this Wolverine guy. <laughs> just sounds awful. I would, I would do that. I'd just be a very crap Wolverine. I think uh, Cable would be really fun. He's always a grump, grumpster too. I think that'd be really fun. Oh, yeah. We keep yeah. in the family too. Yeah, I guess we play my son, father, and son. Yeah, that'd be great. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Hello. I feel threatened. Yeah, you, know, you, know, you have not seen any aliens or yeah. UFOs. Yeah. Hello, we're Agent Lee and Agent Lee with S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, okay. Recruiting <laughs> officers. We're, we're curious to know if you would still like to join the Avengers. <laughs> Did you just take off your yes, dresses and more classes? I thought I was glitching. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do we want to join the Avengers? I don't know. I feel like Rogue said she ran a run in with one of them and he was useless. <laughs> wow. Exactly. Didn't help at all. Wow. <laughs> we kind of got our own thing going, don't we? Maybe, yeah. maybe. Yeah, Gambit, we do have uh, alien technology. We brought Coulson back, you know, so. You know, suddenly Gambit very interesting. <laughs> do the Avengers all live in the same house? Because that's the only thing that we're interested in. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, I'm right. Save it and we'll we'll do it at the uh, selfie. Yes, there we go. That's so cool. That's not really funny. <laughs> not so funny, though. <laughs> no, no, that was in the microphone. You have to check it. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. 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 <laughs> Hello. Hello. We know you. Hello. Hi, yes. Uh, so my question is, is, I'm really into like the artistic, like hidden meaning stuff. Mm -hmm. So in the X Men '97, like artistically, what is your like favorite thing about the show? Artistically hidden meaning, so you're saying visually, or are you like saying any, like any sort as of a like, work of art? Either if it's visual, then visual. If it's like a you know, like a deeper meaning, like a quote or something mm -hmm. that you're attached to, like, you know, take your thing. I got one. So this is a little obscure. I don't know if you guys remember this, but Magneto's thumb. Mm. <laughs> yes. Tasteful. And I cannot wait for the cosplay from here this year, 2024. 
Wait, Jay, it is going to be all of my steroids in order that I can actually do this. This is fine. It's going to be about $40,000 in steroids in order to do this. Hey, come find me on the autograph table. It's going to a good cause. I do good selfies at the table. There you go. Nice. Uh, I think that for me, it's the thing I hinted that before, that uh, I think we've uh, we've been in a, a sad state of affairs for a while because of uh, what uh, what uh, Marvel has been doing with a lot of these movies is not telling a full story, not not going to completion. And I think what this does is the bravery, and I think that's why people really hold on to something like this that says, it ended, thank God, I can feel, I'm allowed to feel something. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's a brave artistic choice that they were able to actually pull off before the executives got it, got it and started messing things up. Spoken like a true storyteller, man. Like that's, that's yeah, really well said. I feel I feel strong about that. Yeah. That's, I feel like that is I mean seriously though the yeah, it's not. But uh, I thought you thought. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, uh, no, I mean that's something that's overlooked. I think because writing's invisible. Right. You know, like you don't. You just go, yeah. Well, of course, that's how a story works. You don't think about the people that are actually crafting it. There's a craft to storytelling in the way that there is for making a car or food, and that's all there. I mean, that's all in the writing, and it, it's it's no small task to do that. It's really? It gets and the storyboarding. Storyboarding is yeah. I was going to say yeah, like, like insane. I, I don't know about you guys, but when I would read the scripts, like they are so dense with what is happening, and I don't have that visual ability, so I was kind of lost visually on what was happening when I would read the scripts. Definitely. And so when we did start, to, when we went to the premiere, and I could actually see all of this stuff on screen and see what had been realized by the directors and the storyboard artists and all the animators, and going, oh, there. Good at this. Because <laughs> that's it, what a Magneto is. <laughs> <laughs> it, like, it, it, stuff that was tough to follow in the, in, in the writing, and it was written fluently, it was just dense, all of a sudden was very easy to follow visually. And that takes a real clarity of vision and understanding of composition and story and storytelling in order to put that that clearly and that succinctly, because there's a lot of material in every episode. Absolutely. And their ability to do that, to translate it from a written word to a visual, is unfathomable to me. Very well said. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate that. I'll tell you, I this microphone is cursed. <laughs> it, yeah. It's a scroll. Okay, it's a, what's this leg out? Yeah. I'm blind. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. Hello. Oh, wow. Okay. Hi there. I want to again thank you all for doing a wonderful job, obviously, with the show. But Thanks. I did have a question of now that you've gotten more engrossed into the X Men culture, has there been a. Uh, a story or uh, a nice plot line that you followed with the X-Men that you've gotten more interested in now that you're more engrossed into the X-Men culture. <clears throat> so not a spoiler of any sort, but hypothetically, if there was a X-Men storyline that you have discovered that's not a part of the show, that you would love to do something with hypothetically, there's telling that for the snipers in the back, they're not spoiling <laughs> anything. Yeah, I mean, there's a site archive of our own uh, where I think a lot of cool plot lines uh, come. Uh, these are uh, uh, fan fictions uh, which uh, envision two or more characters together. Mm -hmm. Showing sure, love, <laughs> and I really think that uh, I would I would love to get more into those uh, plot lines. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. Disney snipers. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, that's the way people ask you to lose performance capture. Yes, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I, I would love to do it. Actually, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah a little mocap happening. Yeah. I mean, I recently got into the, the what's the X of Swords and all yes. that stuff. Yeah, the Kakoa Age. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, Kakoa. Yes, it's it's yes. so good. I mean, I don't. I, let's hope that there's a million seasons and, you know, and they eventually can get to something like that. But, like, I was so. One of my buddies was like, you have to read this. Yes. I was like, I haven't picked up, like, a new X in my comic in years. I was reading through, like, Age of Apocalypse mm -hmm. and some of the Claremont mm -hmm. stuff just to refresh myself with self like a while ago. But then he's like, we have to read this. I was like, okay, and I read it. I was like, this is nuts. Yes. Uh, but that stuff is brilliant. I, that almost feels like its own series, like, mm -hmm. a, like an unrelated <laughs> thing. But just as far as good, fun storytelling goes, uh, yeah, that I would love to see in some capacity. Even just like what DC does, whether it's like a standalone movie yeah. or like The Killing Joke or something. Mm -hmm. So I'd be like, yeah, <laughs> that'd be fun. Awesome. Great. Thank Cheers. you very much. Cheers. Hello. Great job, Mike. Thank you. Uh, thank you. you quick too. question. Uh, <laughs> with the Watcher showing up in episode five, mm. is there any talks in any of you guys joining the What If next season? Does that count as a spoiler? Somebody says, me? Uh, would you be open to 
be in uh, the What If Season 3 if you got the opportunity. Don't know much about this. <laughs> I don't, yeah, uh, so the Watcher is a cosmic entity yes. that's there for important key events. In, yeah. Uh, in, uh, and so, I mean, yeah, I think any of us would love to be employed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Do you yeah. want to be in another show? Yes. Yes. Be in another yes. show? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. That's how we can answer that. That sounds great. You should, you should have Josh here because he's Captain America. He's Captain America, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. He's here at the conference. Yeah. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Put a wedge him in on that couch with you. Yeah, yes. <laughs> we messed up. Anyway, sorry. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Solid yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Hello. Hi. <laughs> um, if you could have any X Men superpower, which would it be? Any X Men superpower, which would it be? Uh, I feel like the, the the genie where you wish for more wishes. I would choose uh, Morph. You just get to be a mall. That's, That's too much fun. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the best one. Okay, I like that. I I I, I have a lot of small children, so I would go with multiple man who shows up in the five. <laughs> there's, like, there's one for each kid. There's yeah. one to work. There's one to fix stuff. Like for, for the next like ten years, that's always going to be my answer. Sorry, sorry. I would choose Leech so you guys couldn't have those. Damn! Damn. 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 Rock, paper, scissors all along. Yeah. Yeah. No, I honestly, I think of Morph all the time because it's, I said this at one of the things we did where it got the idea of like, because I do voice matching for different celebrities and stuff, and the idea of just showing up as the celebrity would be really oh, fun. That'd be great. And you don't have to do any practice. <laughs> yeah. It just comes down to money with you, doesn't it, AJ? Well, I mean, no, that would be fun. fun. It's like, oh my god, Tom Holland's here. And it's just like, you know, you know just like... <laughs> yeah, it's funny that I would use my power for my normal job. Not, yeah. it's, we're actors, we like being other people, not yeah, ourselves. Not be Except easy. for Matthew, who would create more of himself. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. I'm just more mad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, we're gonna be actors, though. He's like, no, oh, yeah. oh, this one's a dentist. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Love your jacket. That's right. Yeah. Hello. I've kind of got like a little bit of a rare question. If you'll indulge me. Okay. Was there any anxiety walking the X Men IP back thirty years? Like nothing happened, especially with like Cyclops going from being a uh, close to the modern day to a uh, uh, the best terrorist, like the way he was in the 90s, or uh, Magneto coming from a Professor X like arc back down to being a domestic terrorist, or Gambit actually having a new character arc. Mm, mm. <laughs> well, I mean, I've been out in that one. There, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's had some stuff in the comics. Yeah. More or less. I mean, not as pivotal as what you do. I, but yeah, I guess. I feel like the anxiety for that rested on the showrunners to make those kinds of choices, and we were just along for the ride. We did, we did what they, what they said. We were like, yeah, of course, we'll, we'll, we'll do our best to give you the type of performance, the sound. But uh, it was, it was those guys uh, uh, making those choices. I think they absolutely nailed it. Yeah, absolutely. a hard needle to thread. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they did such an incredible job of boiling down the amount of content that is covered in just this first season and getting stuff into the episodes that that I, it, it, it honestly wasn't the thing that, that occurred to me because I would read like I said I would read the scripts and, and just be like I need to put so much thought and attention into what is the density of what's in here that uh, as Ray said like that work had already been done before long before it came to me. I imagine reading the scripts like Bella Swan, which is depressed by that word, where she's just staring out a window for four seasons. Where it's just like, Matthew, you have to wake up. And yes, I know you're going to make fun of me for knowing Twilight that well. I've seen that movie many, many times. Oh, wow. uh, you got to watch it wine drunk. It's the only one. <laughs> Sorry. This hey, is what, that was a couch. You like, <laughs> Thanks. Thank, Thank you. Thank so you. Thank you. We're within the last five minutes, so we'll try to get through you guys as quickly Speed as possible. Drunk. Hi, um, what's the hardest part about being a voice actor? Showing up on time. <laughs> <laughs> the hardest part about being a voice actor is um, one job doesn't pay for anything. You have to always be working and finding more work. Uh, you're always auditioning. We spend most of our time auditioning. It's 90% of the job. Uh, auditioning, getting rejecting, and so then once you actually got it, that's just absolutely, that's delight, that's your dream come true. So uh, as far as uh, the hardest part is, continue to show up for your job, which is auditioning. That is our job. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's you. a rough way to put that, but yeah, that's totally yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, it's like People just assume, it's like, wow, you're on this show, you must have a house and be rich, and it's like, that's not how this works. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. That, that no, but I mean, that, as the way Ray put it, friends and family will, you know, change jobs and go, oh, we have to do like job interviews and, and look for a new job and it's awful. And even though people move careers way more frequently now than they did 40 years ago, like if they move, if they move jobs like seven, eight times in their, you know, in their working like 45 years, that's a lot. We're do we're trying out for new jobs anywhere from eight to fifteen times a night. Right. Yeah, and so yeah. it is, you, you are just so a weird a weird detail about our lives. It's weird. Is someone asked me it was like, oh, there's something called DocuSign. Do you know it? And I'm like, we sign our tax documents every day. <laughs> yeah. Imagine signing a 1099 W two every single day. Wow. Yeah, well, <laughs> I live on DocuSign. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so put stock in that because uh, it, I, have a, I have a pro account. It is important, yeah. <laughs> yeah, most people need to get sexier. Yeah. You get like a W2 or whatever, and, and, and we're in a position where we're like, all right, I have 65 different companies yeah, that I have yeah, to get exactly. exact documents from. Stressful stuff. Or the stuff you don't stuff. think about when yeah. voice actors and tax documents. It's, it's, fun. Fun. Yeah. it's not even like those 65 aren't all cool things. It's like you went in the background of a movie, <laughs> yes. and they went perfect. Uh, yeah. I, anyway, sorry. Hi, Hello. I, you have uh, 50 seconds. That's right. I'm at, um, uh, so my question is, not the show's over now, do you ever just like stare into the mirror and just like pretend you're somebody else voicing your character? Just like Magneto trying to pretend he's Wolverine like, hey, uh, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> we do, uh, my wife and I, uh, certainly all the time. Where's Any, going? Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime uh, that we talk about that specific kind of pants, we always say, Gee! Every time. That's, that's what's changing our life. <laughs> well, done. well yeah. done. Mine is the Wolverine saying, Gee! Is, <laughs> is my go to gene. Yes. Gee! <laughs> or there's also, More! No. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's so high and it's so low. <laughs> or the Professor X scream from the, the other one. <laughs> We both don't know. Absolutely. So Have you, do you do one outside of Magneto? You can tell. No, I mean, I, 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 like I said, I'm small children, so the amount of times a day that I just walk into a room and go, oh dear. <laughs> That's perfect. It's, 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 yeah. perfect. Anime Columbus, do me a favor, make some noise, show some love. <laughs> <laughs> uh,